All right, hands up if you guys are feeling the pinch of groceries at the moment. I mean, I'm pretty sure everyone here is going to raise their hand. And if you're not, then I think you need to get in the comments and share your secrets with us. But today, I'm going to talk about the ways that my family is saving money on groceries in 2024, even with all of the price hikes and inflation and all that sort of stuff that we're seeing going on. How are we saving money on groceries? And hopefully some of those tips will help you guys as well. Oh, and if we haven't had the chance to hang out before, my name is Nikki. I'm an Aussie mum, and I love sharing all of the tips and tricks that have helped our family get more bang for our buck so we can live the life we want. Now, for us, that is traveling full time in our caravan around Australia, which I think actually gives us an interesting perspective on grocery prices. Because we are traveling around, we are actually seeing what it's like all across our country and seeing how prices vary in different states, in regional areas, in metro areas, between different supermarket chains and all of those sorts of things. So today I'm going to share with you guys the tips and tricks that have been working for us across the board. Now there are heaps of great tips out there, don't get me wrong. I'm not uh, bashing anybody who shares their tips because I think Every single thing helps. But what I will say is that I think sometimes a lot of our tips really focus on quite small savings. We're pinching pennies as opposed to looking at more of a holistic picture. And today the tips that I'm going to share with you guys take a little bit of a different twist on saving money at the grocery store. I think that we should be incorporating any tips that work for us and these are the ones that we have found work pretty much regardless of where we are and I suppose in some respects of how we are living. So great tips out there like if you can grow your own food that's a great way to save money on groceries but a lot of us don't have access or the ability to be able to do those sorts of things. So Today, we're not going to talk about those sorts of tips, not to say that they don't work and they're not great. By all means, they are fantastic and any way that we can save money on groceries is definitely a win in my book. But today, I'm going to share with you the strategies that are working to help us save money in 2024. This is current. These are my current ideas. Some of them I'm sure that you have heard before because they have stood the test of time. And I think that's actually a really good thing because if I'm still talking about these tips now, years and years on, then obviously they're working and we will keep doing them. And I hope that inspires you guys to give them a go. But my first tip, I suppose, if this is a tip, is to understand and think about how supermarkets work. So supermarkets are there to make a profit and I know that sounds like horrible things to say and I am not against companies making profits or capitalism or any of those sorts of things I just think we need to be realistic and look at what the purpose of a supermarket is on the front it would look like a supermarket is there to provide people with food but the reality is that supermarkets are there to make a profit and so they are designed to get us as consumers to buy more food so the more food we buy the more profits the supermarkets make and if you have a look back over the profits that Coles and Woolies have made even during COVID and uh, post-COVID, uh, I know there's a bit of an inquiry going on at the moment as to um, price gouging and all that sort of stuff going on, but, but let's look at it for what it is. Supermarkets are there to make a profit for their shareholders, for their executives and their bosses and all that sort of stuff. So at the end of the day, we need to bear that in mind every single time we walk into a supermarket. So the majority of my tips are not about pinching pennies and that's not to disregard those tips, include them if they work for you, but to have a look at the bigger picture and work out how I can save money regardless of where I'm shopping. So understanding that supermarkets are there to make a profit, my first tip that works for us is to 
limit the amount of times that I go to a supermarket. So I like to shop once a week. I think the biggest thing that I can do to save money at the supermarket is limit my exposure to supermarkets. Unfortunately, being able to shop once a month or something like that isn't really feasible for us. We do try to stock up on pantry staples and freezer stuff as much as possible, but we do consume fresh produce as well and that just doesn't last as long. So we do need to pop into supermarkets a little bit more regularly than once a month but I do try to limit it to no more than once a week. I find that if I'm popping back in for a top-up shop just to pick up a few bits and pieces, then that's when I tend to spend just a little bit more, but all of those top-up shops add up fairly quickly and quite substantially over the course of time. So if you can pick one day a week to go grocery shopping and stick to that, I guarantee you will save money. It's going to work in two ways. One, you're not going to go back for a top-up shop, pick up the things that you needed, but also throw a few extra bits and pieces in your trolley as well. Pretty sure we're all guilty of that. I know that I am. But the second thing is that it makes us think a bit more strategically and creatively about the things that we have on hand that we may be able to substitute instead of going back to the shops. So it's twofold. It's going to stop us from buying stuff that wasn't on our list, but it's also going to make us use up some of the things that we already have. That brings me to tip number two. Each week I try to include recipes that use up the things that I already have on hand in my fridge, freezer and pantry. If you guys have been around my channel for long enough, you know that I do kind of bang on about this a fair bit, but this is a great easy way to save money. Use up the things that you already have because you've already spent money on them. So if I can do at least one use it up meal a week, now that could be from scratch using ingredients that I've already purchased in earlier shops, things from my pantry and my freezer, or maybe it's just simply a meal where I'm using leftovers. So instead of meal planning for seven dinners a week, I'll only meal plan for six. And one of those meals will be based around leftovers, using up the bits and pieces, even if it's different serves for each of our family members from different meals. It doesn't all, we don't have to all eat the same meal at the same time, the same dinner table. It's okay if one of us has a leftover meal from Monday, the next person has the leftover meal from Tuesday, and somebody else has the leftover meal from third Wednesday. It, it really doesn't matter that we're not all eating the exact same thing. We've all got a dinner in front of us and that's the most important thing. So that brings me to tip number three, which I'm sure you've also heard me talk about a fair bit, but guaranteed this is one of the best ways that we save money. And that is by having a meal plan and shopping with a list. Now these two things do go hand in hand, but having an idea of the meals that I want to create before I even walk into the supermarket means that my time in the supermarket is a little bit more effective. I'm not wandering around with no idea what I want to cook up and just putting random ingredients in my trolley. I'm going in with a plan and I'm executing that plan as quickly as possible. I find that if I have a meal plan and a shopping list, I'm so much more focused. And the other thing that really helps is by using the apps that both Coles and Woolies have. I can put all of the items that I want to purchase into a list in those apps and it's going to tell me exactly in the store where I need to go. So I can go in with a plan, a meal plan, but also a plan of all of the things that I want to purchase. I'm going to be a lot more efficient and effective with my time and I'm going to go straight to the places that I need to to get the things that are on my list. That does mean I don't get to meander around the supermarket. Sometimes I might miss some things that are a good price, maybe they're on clearance, maybe they're marked down. But I have found 
over the course of the last couple of years when I've been implementing this strategy, I definitely save money because I'm also not finding all of those other things that weren't on my list that I maybe feel like in the spur of the moment and popping those into my trolley. So meal planning and shopping with a list is definitely up there when it comes to saving money. One of the things I will say about meal planning is that you don't have to have a rigid list. I've talked about meal planning a fair bit in previous videos, so I'm not going to go on about it too much. If you'd like to go and check those videos out, I do give heaps of strategies when it comes to meal planning. But I think the most important one is not to make it too rigid. I know people get very overwhelmed when they think that they need to come up with basically 21 different meals. You're talking about seven breakfasts, seven lunches and seven dinners. I don't think meal planning should be that complicated and it certainly doesn't work for me if I try to make it that complicated. What works for me is just having a list of ideas, sometimes it's more than seven and that's fine, of all of the things that I would like to make this week. Then I can decide which night is going to be the best night to make which dinner and it's okay for those to move around a little bit depending on what we're doing and how we're feeling. If coming up with a week of meals is too overwhelming, and I understand that too, I remember when I first started meal planning, that was really hard. I'd gone from deciding what we were going to eat basically that day to trying to think over the course of a week and trying to make it perfect as well, which we don't need to do that either. But let's just start simply. Maybe just pick three. Maybe start with three meals and we'll build up from there. The best advice that I can give you guys with any of these tips is to start small and build up. Do not feel like you need to try and implement everything that we're doing so that you can have success. Any one of these tips will work just on their own and the more that you can build the more I think that they become more effective. So that's going to bring me to my next tip which works in with meal planning. But we follow a basic principle, and we have been for the last couple of years, which I've called the $10 dinner rule. Basically, it goes like this. I try to average out the cost of our dinners, our main meals every week, to on average $10 per meal. That is three serves for us because we're a family of three across the week. So basically I allocate $70 of our grocery budget to dinners, to main meals. Now that doesn't mean that every main meal that I cook costs exactly $10. It's an average. And the principle works like this. I'm going to offset a couple of more expensive dinners with some really super cheap dinners and then that way I can keep my average around $10. Over the last couple of years the cost of groceries has definitely gone up and if my family was still a family of five I probably would have increased that a little bit. We've been in the situation where our two older children have actually moved out of home so our family has become smaller. We're now feeding three instead of five so I've been able to keep my average around about ten dollars that allows us to do some fun meals we can have our friday night fun meals we can pick a few more extravagant meals if that's what we feel like doing but we're going to offset them by having some really cheap meals as well so not every meal has to be instagram perfect and i like to basically just go one for one if we're going to do one more ex expensive meal, then I make sure that we have one dirt cheap meal on the list as well. All right, my final tip for you guys, possibly a little bit of a controversial one, but I hope that you'll hear me out on this one. Over the last couple of years, my family has focused on building meals that are based on whole foods. We've focused on basic ingredients and cooking a lot more from scratch. We personally have reduced the amount of meat and dairy that we consume and that has definitely helped us save some money because I do think that grains and legumes and vegetables are cheaper ingredients. But the other thing that we've noticed by doing that 
is that we're not eating a lot of processed foods or ultra processed foods so we really have cut down on the amount of for want of a better word junk food uh, we don't do a lot of snacks chips soft drinks uh, those sorts of items that you can purchase from the supermarket that can be quite expensive and can add up particularly when they're not adding value to a main meal they're not adding a breakfast a lunch or a dinner they really are just adding snacks you take those things out of your grocery trolley then you will definitely help to reduce your grocery budget so how do you stop the snacking i suppose well what we have found is focusing on whole foods and going back to making a lot of things more basic going back to basic foods we seem to be fuller for longer which is a really good thing we're focusing on like i said before whole grains legumes they're your beans and peas and chickpeas and lentils those sorts of things lots of fruit lots of vegetables and some healthy nuts keeping those things pretty basic means that we don't rely on snacky processed foods to fill us up that is not to say that we do not consume them we do snacks happen but we're not relying on them to fill us up because in a lot of respects i think that they are empty calories there's a lot of calories in them but they don't really make us full so by focusing on a whole food predominantly plant-based diet i'm not saying that you have to give up meat and dairy we are not vegan uh, and i've said that several times before but i do think switching our focus over has definitely helped us to save some money at the grocery store but also by focusing more on a whole food approach to cooking at home and our meals has meant the upside of that has meant we've really cut back on all of those ultra processed foods those snacky foods that may seem not terribly expensive except for the fact when you consider that they're not really adding much as far as a main meal goes then that's a lot of extra dollars that we're putting in our trolley for snacks with all of that said they are the tips and tricks that are helping our family save money on groceries in 2024 i've spoken to a lot of people recently people that have met on the road traveling and they all say the same thing food is so expensive how do you keep your grocery budget so low well these are the tips but i know from talking to people when you lay all of this out in front of people it's really really overwhelming and the first thing they say is why well, couldn't do that i'm here to tell you guys you can but my biggest tip overall has nothing to do with saving money at the grocery store or supermarkets or any of those sorts of things my biggest biggest tip if you want to save money at the grocery store or anywhere else when you hear all of these tips that people have and they share and i know that people do it with really good intentions because they have found that they work I mean that's why i'm sharing this video with you guys because this is what has worked for us all of these tips but the thing that gets missed sometimes is that we don't have to jump in and do all of these things to get a good result so my biggest tip to you if you would like to save money at the grocery store and you're finding that you're not getting there would be to pick one thing just one thing it can be one thing that I've mentioned today. Maybe it's one thing that you've heard from somebody else. It doesn't matter what it is, but just pick one thing and work on implementing that. Once you feel comfortable with that one thing, then go ahead and add another thing. You've probably noticed that a lot of the things that I spoke about today sort of all tie in with each other. And that's because they do all work together. This is the system that is working for us. And they all feed off each other and work into each other. But you could pick any one of these things as a standalone tip implement it even cut it down into an even smaller tip if that's what you wanted to do like i said you could just pick one use it up meal once a week just pick one ingredient 
from your pantry that you've already purchased and make sure you use that up each week and then perhaps in a couple of weeks time then you could be up to three and then maybe you have three use it up meals a week who knows maybe eventually you do a whole pantry challenge week where you don't go grocery shopping you shop from your fridge freezer freezer in your pantry for the entire week and you save that amount of grocery money it doesn't matter which tip you pick just pick one implement it slowly until you feel comfortable and then add another none of these tips are going anywhere and i'm fairly confident that all of these tips will work next year and the year after and the year after that because we have been doing these for several years and it's definitely helped us save money in the long run regardless of where we are in australia on our groceries but i didn't just wake up one morning and implement all of these tips this has been a system that has been built over several years and now it's something that i do without even really thinking about it and i hope if you start slowly as well and implement the tips that work for you and for your family not all of them will because we are all in different situations with different needs and it is okay to adjust and adapt the tips that you hear so that they work for your family so regardless of your dietary choices of any dietary restrictions that you have um, restrictions around where you can shop from if you live remotely maybe you only have access to an iga and you can't shop and compare the prices and pit coles and woolies and aldi together all of the tips that i've shared today i hope would still be equally as effective regardless of where you live where you shop the dietary requirements or restrictions of your family and uh, pretty much anything else i can think of right now I would love to hear from you guys in the comments and I would love for you guys to share the tips and tricks that have been helping you save money on groceries regardless of where you are and the circumstances that you face share them in the comments because I am sure that other people can also benefit from hearing the tips and tricks that are working for you at your place even if they won't work in every single situation so brings me back to I would love to be able to grow vegetables or even shop at a cheap fruit and veg shop I know a lot of you guys in metro areas have access to cheap fruit and veg shops or second uh, fruit and veg shops where it's a lot cheaper than the supermarket but the reality is that outside of metro areas they're just not that accessible and a lot of people don't have access to that so that's not saying that's a bad tip that's a great tip for people who might live near a fruit market and hadn't thought to go there but it's not a one-size-fits-all thing so let's share the tips that are working no judgment because everybody's in a different situation like i said this is what's working for us and we've found this works pretty much regardless of where we are in Australia if we can implement these tips we can still find ways to rein in our grocery budget I would love to hear from you guys what tips are working for you regardless of where you are share them I'm sure that there are other people who are in a similar sort of boat who could benefit from what's working for you but it's okay on the flip side of that if some of these tips that you hear don't work for you because you're in a different situation so let's wrap it up and leave it there i hope you guys are having an absolutely fantastic week thank you for spending a little bit of time here with me today i hope that you enjoyed today's video and i hope that there was a few tips and tricks here that will help you at your house to save some money on groceries regardless of where you live or what you're facing at the moment if we can all rein in that grocery budget a little bit i know that we will all be winners if you did enjoy today's video if you could please give it a thumbs up i really do appreciate that it lets me know the kind of content you guys are enjoying and what you'd like to see more of and if you'd like to see more stuff from us then i do hope you consider hitting that little subscribe button down below it is the best way to be notified when my new videos come out i hope you are having an absolutely fantastic week and i do hope to catch up with you in my next video until then take care my friends and we'll chat soon bye